What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap. Today we'll review the personal finance software Monarch Money. So it's been a while since I reviewed a personal finance software. Uh, the last one that I did was Rocket Money. And if you watched that video, you'll know that one of the main reasons I wasn't all that too keen on Rocket Money is that it's basically a paid option um, that didn't really provide, I didn't think, a whole lot of additional benefit over some of the free options that were out there. And namely, the two free options that I was thinking of at the time are Empower, which is what I use, formerly known as Personal Capital, and also Mint. But as we can see here, uh, Mint is going away. And Mint was really, I think, much better for people that were just starting on their personal finance journey, uh, where it's really important to have um, you know, tight budget categories and keep track of every dollar uh, in, in a way that, um, you know, sure, with Empower, I still keep track of every dollar. Um, but I'm not so focused on exactly how much I spent on food versus you know, this category or another, uh, because really my habits are kind of already ingrained. Um, and so I just do more like a yearly review to make sure things are in line, or I'll notice if things are kind of going a little bit out of whack along the way. So it's really quite a, a big of loss, actually, with Mint going away, because it would be the one that um, I would generally recommend to, you know, friends and whomever uh, that were asking to look at some uh, software to help them, you know, do budgeting and um, pay off debt and keep track of all their account balances and that kind of thing. It was ad supported, that's why it was free, but it had all kinds of great functionality. The one part that it didn't do well was investments, and that's, of course, another reason why I went with Empower. Anyway, now, now that it's gone, um, a lot of people are left having to look for other alternatives. You can see here it says you can track your finances with Credit Karma, and you can sign up to learn more. But were you to do that and kind of migrate your data over to Credit Karma, you'd see that a lot of the features that were part of Mint have, um, have gone away. So you can still track your net worth I, according to this screenshot. I don't know if that's actually built out yet. Of course, their main focus is on the kind of the credit and the debt situation. But as you can see, there isn't really any kind of budgeting there um, and certainly not fleshed out. From this screenshot, it looks like we can get kind of an idea of the spending within a month, uh, but it's really not a powerful budgeting tool uh, the way that Mint was. So with everybody moving away from Mint, I wanted to see what people were going to. And I jumped on Reddit because that's always a fun place to get an idea. The two finance softwares that seemed to be getting the most traction were Monarch Money, which I'd never tried before, and also Simplify by Quicken. You might know that I used to use Quicken. I did kind of take a look at Simplify a while back, and I'll be doing a review of them in the future as well. By the way, if you search Reddit for just the words Mint and Credit and Karma, uh, these are results that pop up, so you can see the reception has not been very good to the, uh, the migration to Credit Karma. Okay, so let's take a look at Monarch Money. As you can see here, by the way, as of this filming on January the 8th, um, there was a uh, half off um, deal for Mint, people coming over from Mint with coupon code Mint50. Here's a quick overview of the features that they highlight on their website. And it's really all the stuff that we've come to expect from Mint, for instance, net worth tracking, your investments. Hopefully they're going to be better than Mint. We'll see. Um, tracking progress on different goals by, you know, signing an account to a goal to an account. And then, of course, budgeting reports, transactions, uh, recurring transactions, and an overall dashboard as well. So pretty standard stuff, but let's jump in there and uh, take a look. So a good thing here is that we're able to do a 30-day free trial, and so that's exactly what I'll be taking advantage of. Okay, so I put in my email address. It sent me a verification code to my email. This proves that the email is legitimate, and then it had me set a password. So it turns out that if you pay on an annual basis, it's going to be just under $50. I'm doing the free trial for the 30 days again, and so immediately what I what I do whenever I sign up for any kind of free, free trial is to put an event in my calendar that will remind me to cancel that, so I put that in for a week from today. Okay, so adding accounts is just as easy as with any other platform. Just uh, basically enter your credentials. All right, so I linked accounts from two of my financial institutions. One's Charles Schwab. I have my checking account, and I also added an investment account, an IRA. 
And I also link some of my Capital One credit cards here. So, so this is kind of neat. We're looking at the dashboard here and uh, in the top right, we can see how our spending for the month to date compares to the previous month. This is kind of similar to the cash flow view that you can see in Empower. It's also got a spot where I would set up my budget. We'll get that going later. Net worth tracking and then recent transactions as well. Scrolling further down, we can now see um, any goals that we might set up. And then we can also see recurring transactions, which uh, it thinks that I do these things, $16, but um, that's not true. <laughs> those are not recurring. I don't know what those were, probably for movies or something like that with a group of friends. Uh, and then it's also got some investments there as well, so that's good. Here's what the account screen looks like, and we can see uh, our net worth charted here. Uh, we can do monthly, quarter, and yearly, but I'm not seeing a way to do custom date ranges, so that's a bit of a disappointment. We can see all of our accounts here, as well as um, a nice little summary of your assets and your liabilities, of course, making up that net worth. And then it also does allow us to download that as a comma-separated Excel file. Here's the transactions view. It's always good to see right off the bat that you can do an edit multiple in case you need to uh, batch recategorize or do something like that. It is possible, by the way, to hide the menu bar on the left just by clicking here. And we do have a powerful filter and sort features, as you can see here on the right. We can do by account, category, by amount, um, all kinds of sorting. We can also search transactions by keywords as well. It's also nice how it has subtotals by date. This is something you don't necessarily see everywhere, but I do think that's a nice little touch. I also like the little icons that it has for each of the different categories. And this summary with all of the transactions, largest transaction, total income, total spending, all of that is pretty neat as well. The cash flow section is pretty self-explanatory and looks pretty nice and clean and simple and easy to read. Um, again, though, unfortunately, it doesn't have a um, custom date feature. I'm only seeing monthly, quarterly, and yearly for the chart. Having said that about those views, the reports tab is where we're able to set custom dates, as you can see here. And we're able to do not only cash flow, but also spending income. And we're able to do this really cool sand key diagram of how we are um, allocating all of the income that's coming in, how we're spending that. So that's really, really cool to see. On the budget side, it's nice that it will automatically create a budget for you based on the history that it's importing. It creates a budget for your income and a budget for all of your expenses. So we're looking at both sides of the equation. It's not just a spending plan, but we're actually trying to get a zero-based budget where we're going to be allocating every single dollar. As you can see there, I have uh, some dollars left to budget. So this is pretty cool. And again, I like all of the um, little icons for each of the different categories. Here's an item that should be familiar to Mint or Quicken users, is you can also take a look at uh, the year ahead. But at least on the monthly view, I'm not seeing any annual totals. I think we have to toggle over to the yearly view. Oh, wow. No, if we hit the yearly view, then it actually does do uh, your budget for all of the different years as a column each one. So that's pretty cool. You can really look um, quite far out. Here's another great feature that if you've ever had Quicken before, you might have enjoyed. It's basically that they put all of your recurring bills and whatnot uh, on a calendar. And there's also another view where you can see the different merchants. This is something that uh, Empower doesn't really have. You can see your upcoming credit card bills, but you're not able to see all of the different uh, merchants. Like here, it's got my electricity and my internet and what have you, and that's not available on Empower. Here we can also see which ones are upcoming and which have been completed, which is really nice. On the Goals tab here, if I had any kind of a debt account or um, a savings account, I could always set a goal in order to reach a certain amount of savings, or in order to pay it down a certain amount of debt. And so that'd be something we could set up here. Finally, let's take a look at the investment section here and see how that compares. Um, certainly almost anything is gonna be a step up over Mint because Mint was pretty terrible at doing this, but let's see. So here it's got a comparison of uh, the performance of my portfolio against the benchmark, which in this case is the S&P 500. So that's pretty cool. We can see my different holdings here and we're able to change the time frame that we're looking at here as well. We can go out to one year. Nice graphics as it changes. And let's go out five years. And there we go. Very cool. Also nice to see that the performance here changes as we change the date range. Taking a look at the allocation section, uh, we can see here that it just says ETF. And so that's really poor. Um, and certainly it's not digging anywhere deeper where it should know that this total international stock, of course, is international equities, and then this is uh, U.S. equities. 
So I would hope that the um, in the future they'll be adding a little bit more here in order to <laughs> provide a little bit more detail than just oh these are ETFs. Um, maybe it does better with mutual funds, but uh, I don't I don't have any of those linked up here with um, with Monarch. So do let us know in the comments below if you have a better experience with mutual funds, but with ETFs, uh, not very good here. Of course, a huge consideration, especially these days, is how good is the mobile app. So here we have the mobile app for Monarch Money. Um, probably this let's setting up would no, not be the normal thing that you'd look at, so let's hide that widget. And so here's kind of how the, uh, the dashboard would be. Huh, let's take a look at this track our progress dealing. Shows our top expense categories. Cash flow trends. This part won't make sense because we just added the account, of course. And it has a nice little breakdown of our assets, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> and of course, they're trying to get us to uh, to share this with someone else, so okay. Anyway, the dashboard's nice. It's got a net worth as we would expect. If we swipe this over, then we can see the details in terms of the assets and liabilities as well. And just like on the web, then below that we also have our recent transactions, our spending this month against last month, Looks more zoomed in here. You can see a little bit more detail. Then we've got our budget and recurring expenses, as well as our investments. Everything does move nice and fluidly, and I think it is visually quite appealing as well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. It would be easy to add accounts from mobile, just as you can on the web. And the transactions look good on mobile too, and they still have those daily subtotals, which I like, and also the cool little icons. You can customize your dashboard by clicking this button in the top right. And then you can move around the different things that you might be wanting to look at first or later and then apply. When we look at the investment section here, again, the allocation still just says ETF and we're not getting any more detail than that, unfortunately. So overall though, for the mobile app, I would say that it has all of the functionality that you have on web and it's in a nice pleasing format. And I think the color scheme is really good as well. So a good app. So there you go, guys. I hope you found this tour of the Monarch Money Personal Finance app helpful. Um, so how would I conclude? Kind of what are my thoughts on it? Well, I think the first thing to say is it's definitely a shame that the great free option that was meant has gone away and that really has kind of left a void. So when we look at, you know, the completely free options that are out there, um, there's there's Empower, which I personally use, but again, it just doesn't make sense for someone that really wants to focus on their different uh, categories, spending categories, and budget those on a monthly basis and keep, it, keep a really close eye on all of that stuff. It just doesn't help you do that um, to the same degree that, that Mint used to. And then you also have the free version of Rocket Money, but it is a bit limited features. It doesn't have uh, net worth tracking and that kind of thing, but it is an option. And you can check out my Rocket Money review if you want to learn more about that software. There are other free options out there, like if you have a Fidelity account, um, they have something, um, different banks, like Chase has something, there's a free Nerd Wallet one, uh, one by Yodely. So I'll be looking at many of these in the future to see if they're really good um, free options or not. But so far, they don't look to be quite as compelling as Mint was in terms of the free options. So then we're looking at the paid options. And so then we have to ask, well, is Monarch Money worth its sticker price? And that is, you know, right now, uh, as I'm filming this, they have this uh, Mint 50, 50% off code uh, that brings the annual subscription down from $100 to 50. But I think it really makes more sense to look at, you know, the, the normal cost, which is $100 a year. And so at $100 a year, you know, there are a lot of other options out there. There's You Need a Budget uh, would be right around the same amount. And, uh, you know, that's very well loved. I think it has kind of a steeper learning curve to get into, but very well loved. Um, then you've got Simplify by Quicken, which is cheaper, and I think they have a really good uh, offer out there as well. That'll be my next review, so I can give you some more detailed uh, thoughts about that. So I guess I would summarize by saying that at $50 a year, uh, Monarch Money seems like, a, you know, a, a very solid deal. Like, it's a good offering. It's a, It replaces uh, it's able to do a lot of the stuff that Mint could do. Still seems to have that little quirk about investments, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, but it's very solid. At $100 a year, then uh, really it's competing against, you know, a, a lot of players out there. And at that stage, it's really kind of your personal preferences and, and what you like uh, the most. 
Because if you wanted a ton of features, you know, even beyond what what um, what Mint ever had, you could look at desktop options like like Quicken. Um, I moved away from them for many reasons. You can check out my video. Uh, but there are there's a certain demographic, of course, that's going to really want uh, to have all those those features, and then also to have uh, maybe like a, a desktop version and not a cloud-based version. And then if we're looking at cloud-based ones, well, then again, Simplify is cheaper. Uh, Rocket Money has a sort of pay what you think it's worth option that can go as low as I think about four dollars a month uh, which comes out to under fifty dollars a year and again rocket money does have a lot of good features as well in the premium version um, just kind of check out the video but the the quick cliff notes version is like be careful about all the stuff that they're cross-selling you uh, they're really really savvy about doing that with the application so in short I guess what I'm saying is it's a solid uh, replacement for mint However, with a hundred dollar a year cost, it is a bit expensive, and so it would behoove you to look around and see if there are other options that you know accomplish what you want and and are able to fit in your budget. But that being said, it is uh, it does look to me like a solid option as well. Hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.